A guy's at legendary Maple Grove Raceway in Pennsylvania with Tony Angelo and his team because I bought this 1967 Ford Fairlane sight unseen. It's a drag car that was a roller that was off the road, we think, 40 years. At least, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Basically, this is a car that I found on Facebook uh, looking just like this. I could tell it has old race stickers all over it. It has the bus seat. It has the half of a hoop in the back. It is a proper old street strip car. Yeah. And I said, Derek, you got to buy this thing. It's a big old cool Ford. <laughs> and you were like, I'm in. Let's do it. It's basically his fault. He said, look at this one picture that's grainy and taken from a potato. And I said, yes, we're doing it. You're like, I'll buy it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we just found out more and more about the car. It's got a ton of great local racing history. You know, it was a four-speed car. It's got a big bracket for nitrous in the back. It's got ladder bars, huge old frame connectors. It, it, was, it looks pretty clean, but it, was, it definitely was a serious runner. Yeah. We thrashed this thing together. It's running. But we're going to make a pass. A Maple Grove, just like it did in the 60s and 70s. And then I'm going to try to drive it 900 miles back home. Let's dig in and see what happens. So, you guys probably figured it out by now, but if you haven't, Tony thrashed an engine together over on the Stay Tuned channel, and that's what's in this bad boy. It's a Roller 302, but I'll let you speak the details, because I don't really know. All I know is it sounds awesome, and yeah. it drives great. Yeah, we tried to sneak it by as like a, just a little stock motor we put a four barrel on top of, but we got a little bit more nasty than that. Uh, we did full 202 160 valve Summit aluminum heads. Uh, a 550 lift camshaft. I think it's the F303 setup. You know, Ford does the letters. Uh, so it's, it's <laughs> yeah. pretty rowdy. You know, big old four barrel on it, headers, everything. And then we dialed it in as best we could. And it's, it was supposed to be like a low miles motor, so we didn't touch anything underneath. Roll the dice, send you on your way. Yeah. Uh, but it seems to make great oil pressure, and it sounds killer. And we haven't done really any serious driving with it yet. No, nothing, no. And uh, it's kind of a backstory to that. I was like, Tony, just go find a... I'm thinking he's going to pull something out of a Granada or an LTD or something. Like, low buck, just keep it cheap. And he's like, I got you. Don't worry about it. And then he surprised me with this thing, which is awesome. But uh, we'll, we'll take a quick look at the motor and the transmission, and then... Uh, I'm going to share some history of this car, and then we'll really walk around this thing and show you what we got going on. So Tony even spray-painted the aluminum heads <laughs> and ground everything off trying to, uh, trying to hide it. Bottom. Yeah, he, they almost got me, but I was kneeling down really close, and I saw the ARP head bolts, and I was like, wait a minute. I, I understand putting head gaskets in, but that's... And then I think the, the ghost was up yeah, after that. Yeah, the cat was out of the bag at that point. But yeah, it's an 87 Mustang GT motor, which is a roller motor and has the forged stock pistons in it. And then we put it just the biggest, nastiest heads and cam we could basically fit in there and still, you know, not hit the pistons with. And, <laughs> and, and then dial it all in. And it sounds healthy, man. It's, it's cool, and I'm excited to get it to run down the track today. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be so much fun. But yeah, so we got, you know, just heads, headers, cam... Uh, Summit intake, it's got a Holley 750 on it, MSD, um, threw a new water pump on it. This is a custom pulley system here. Barb helped throw together. All this stuff works great. We didn't throw any belts yesterday, and I think we twisted her to six a few times. So, yeah. But today is really going to be the first time really getting after it, and then uh, we got to see uh, what 900 miles holds. And so I think this is probably going to be okay. It's more like wheel bearings and... Yeah, we didn't we, do much. No. <laughs> we did a quick refresh on all four drums. Well, you did, on the drums, and then we're just going to kind of close our eyes and see yeah. it. So before we take a close walk around and look at this thing, I'm going to give you a snapshot in history throwing this together with Tony and his team. It was a lot of fun. Quite a few late nights, but it didn't feel like work. We were just, you know, having a ball. Old school hot rod and using what we had, using what we could. Cobbling some things, cutting a few corners, but that's just the way she goes. And then going to show you a conversation we have with the feller that knew Ted. Uh, you can hear the history and kind of the pedigree of this car. He said it was an absolute beast on the streets. People knew it well. He raced out here at Maple Grove. And you guys know that I absolutely love the history of automobiles and equipment. In fact, a lot of times I buy them just for the history and not necessarily the car. And this one has a lot, and I want you guys to check it out.
comes out, 1988, uh, behind the car, he's holding the thing, and he, Ted Carl, Ted Carl from Limerick. Got drafted in the Army, came back. I don't know if he served in Vietnam, but he's street lord in that era. Came back, uh, got the bar. Late 60s, early 70s, was a legend. Smithers. Then Jimmy Schwartz and uh, Rod Young, three guys in that area. But I guess it just progressed from there. He ended up running our gear, ran some sock with it. I had a 427 in it when I saw it, man. I never heard of Ron. But uh, we walked back in the garage. I, Told the guy here where it was, and it sat in there from 1978 when I met at 10 till the day he sold it. He sold it uh, February of 22, and then he best away his body while it's in it. So, well, yeah, he was, was a three race high out like Hot Town area? Yeah, it's called High Street. High Street. High Street. Yeah. yeah, yeah, well, they were doing it back in the 60s too, man. And once you got out of town, it was more rural. Yeah, yeah. they really not going there. Okay. My dad has an FE in his Dallas, and he would go down there and he was asking us all kinds of questions about it. He's like, where you shook at? We said, I um, said, six, it's a thousand. He's like, Jeez, that's late on for us. That's an email. <laughs> Dude, the fact that the car is set to like 7,800. Yeah, 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 well, on the, on the that car ran 106. I think yeah. he ran super stock high with it. So he was running, that's seven. That's 700 or the Rob Pitt, yeah. 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 I mean, that was, yeah. that's not from parts. Yeah. I mean, there was no... I don't, it was an idiom riser, that's all I remember. It had a wicked big four cam. So, that's game. Yeah, I love it. Well, thanks for sharing the information. I mean, we knew someone legit on the car. Oh, it so doesn't look yeah, at it. It's serious. You knew it was an old school uh, hot out of So, back in the day, like everybody, like every gas station, every auto mechanic had a race car. And that was Ted. He was the guy in Limerick. It wasn't that big at the time. But man, he. So I had no problem in turning them, that's for sure, man. So, but, yeah, thank you so much. Man. No problem. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. So there is a lot to drink in with this thing. So I think we're just going to have to start scooting around it and peel this thing back a little bit at a time. This guy put some work into this thing, and there's quite a few old race tricks on it, too. Going to have to show you, but it's a nice 20-footer. It's got some shine on it. Enough to make a guy nervous, I'll tell you that much. Do you lean against it? Do you not? I don't know. I don't know the rules with shiny paint. But as you can see, it's not all rotted away. The exterior, anyway. The quarter panels aren't gone. The fenders aren't gone. We'll start on this side. You can see that on both sides, the fender lip has been cut and that this has been rolled out. Probably the old baseball bat trick. See that? So the guy had some big tires in there. And I'll show you the springs and the suspension setup in a minute. We know he had some, some pretty good tires under this. This quarter panel, we got some galvanized, I don't know, grain bin, hard to say, and a patch up here. And then he repainted, obviously. But that's kind of the worst of the exterior. This fender's in great shape. No rot or rust there. The hood does have some issues pretty much all over wherever the support bars are on the inside it's starting to go yeah. you can hear the rust and stuff falling down in there front's pretty straight it's got you know a couple whiskey dents acceptable one of my favorite parts of the car look at that bicentennial plate that actually used to be on the rear we moved it up front because i actually have a real plate for this car believe it or not the PBR overflow pop top, thinking that's 70s for sure, early 70s, something like that. This side of the car, same, pretty clean. I think we got a ridge, original ridge on the rocker here. Some rust bubbles on the door, nothing to, nothing to nitpick. No, I take it back. He did patch it the same on this side. Same delete and roll. Got a little bondo here. That's okay. That's fine. All right. Trunk lid, don't have that on there yet. Now, fuel cell situation. Probably going to have to fix this for the ride home. Okay. It's approved. It's NHRA. The tech guy was here. And he did this. Yeah, it's, it's probably okay. No. So, we're going to have to address this a little bit got some ideas there but the old feller 
the how I found it was this trunk had just really thin sheet metal in here, almost like HVAC stuff. It was like paper. And then there was a Toyota gas tank sideways in here with a bunch of hoses and stuff coming out of it. And then he drilled and tapped the tank in the bottom for like a sump. And that was his fuel cell, which was pretty sweet. But I needed the capacitai, which is why we're going with this bigger one here. This is a 20 gallon unit. But getting back to suspension, see how the springs are way inboard like this? They actually go out here. But he slid them in. See the spring perch to the left of the spring? That's where it's supposed to go. And he's got it kind of cobbled up, some spacers and things. Those traction bars are welded straight to the axle tube, as you can see there. That's pretty sweet. So he was trying to create enough room to get some bigger tires in here, essentially. We've got air shocks, just stock springs, traction bars, and we've got a 411 or a 410 gear in the rear here. And then these are two 75, 60, 15s on some 15 by 8 wheels. And then these were on the car, but I just spit shined them, SOS them, and used some Never Doll. And they came right back around. And I got the longer studs on it. You know, two new lugs because they're. They may cheap. You know, you got to buy them by the end of edge, usually. Half inch lugs on it as well. And that's kind of the exterior. The glass is in great shape. We don't have any cracks up here. The vent windows work. The windows roll up and down. Haven't tried the back ones yet. Oh, yeah. Look at that. We're going to be cruising in style. Back glass is perfect. Look at this trim. It's beautiful. So I'm not sure what happened with this door, but it will no longer open, which was great because that's how I was rolling in. But let's go get in this thing. The driver's seat is out of a bus, which is pretty interesting. And as you can see, it's not big guy friendly. We actually moved this back. It was even closer. So we know the feller was pretty small in stature, if you know what I mean. But look at this door panel. This will clean up. This is going to be beautiful. Just need the scrub. The carpet's in great shape. The dash is perfect. That door panel is nice. I mean, the rear is the same way. You know, it's all in really good shape. We got an old tack in here that does work. It's a Motorola. I got that working. Fuel gauge doesn't. We've got some family photos in here, which I'm leaving. I was told by someone that knows him he didn't have kids, but I don't know if that's accurate or not. But um that's pretty cool i'm gonna leave that there had to put in a new water temp we've got fuel pressure oil pressure and i believe this was bottle pressure and then we've got the engine safety control old school mallory here it has it set to 7800 rpm and a shift is at seven and then we believe this was a shift light and he was on that thing so many times it melted the lens which is awesome. This is our T5. We got an old school four speed handle on it, you know. The roll cage, well, it's gonna do nothing in a rollover. That one's halfway welded. This one's three quarter of the way welded. That side of the bar goes to a plate on the floor, and so does that one. And then it's kind of just a little hoop over the head, but that's old school, man. That's. They just did what they had to do to go race, and it has the same wheel in it from back then. Got the sparkles, of course. And that's pretty much it for the interior. Got a new hydraulic pedal in there, clutch pedal. Oh, this is cool. He cut the brake pedal on this one side. See how it's longer over there? He cut it just on the one side so his foot can get better engagement on the clutch. Still has the original roll lock or line lock button. I gotta tape it back to the handle. But that's still in there with speaker wire. That's how he had it. And then it's got some switch laters. I believe it was nitrous, ignition. I don't know what that was. Pump, and I don't know what the other one was. They're slightly reconfigured for what we need, how it's set up right now. 
So in the engine bay here, obviously this has all changed and uh, all of the brakes and everything like that clutch, but I left the Mallory safety control box in there. This one has that old school look. Still has the original steel me junction, the starter relay over here, but everything else has been pretty much updated. We put the uh, 6AL in here. This has a rev limiter. We can run it right here. And then new master cylinder, new line lock, and I had to bend every single line on this entire car is new. Down to a junction block down here. So both fronts, the rubber lines, the wheel cylinders, the shoes, the brake hardware, all of that. The line to the rear, both hard lines on both sides, soft line in the middle. You name it, that was a nightmare. There was no brakes on this thing. The fronts were locked up, so they had to be gutted just to roll the car into Tony's shop. So that was kind of one of those bigger projects was just getting some brakes in this thing. Four wheel drum, but listen, it's been that way for years. There's cars out there that are 100 years old still on the road with four wheel drums, and they work just fine. So we've got a list of things to do before we can get this out on the track. I'm so excited to run this at Maple Grove, the same exact track that the owner ran this car in the late 60s, early 70s. See what this thing runs, and then we got 900 miles back home. So again, we've got to do something more permanent with the fuel cell back here. We've got to get a deck lid on this. We might just end up pinning that in, and then I might change the oil pressure line. It's a very, very old, brittle plastic, and you know those guys, they just always break or leak. Might have to do that on the road. I've got so many miles to do. I got to try to do it in two days. So we'll see and then the hood This is being held down by this wire So probably should do something there. We'll probably run pins on that as well And after we get both lids down securely fuel cell that isn't gonna slide out and get drugged down the track by a rubber hose We're gonna fire this thing back up. We're gonna run something I don't know what we're going to run today. We've got all sorts of weird cars out here. Ambulances and a Napa truck and a Porsche with like a straight four or something. I don't know what is in it, but we'll see. It's going to be a lot of fun. I don't think we're going to run the light, but we're going to try our best to get a time slip so we can actually see what we're running in this thing. I'm thinking high 13s, but you never know. It could really surprise us. Guys are going to start with the hood pins, just using this cheapy kit. Here, basically, you just nut on the bottom, nut on the top, jam a hole, and then whoosh, basically just going to take this guy out here, the bump, bumper thing, and then, you know, that's where it lands. Power a hole through there with the Christmas tree bit, and then we should be able to get rid of this guy right here. What's going on is there's a spring in here, and I can't understand where it connects, but that spring... It's supposed to hold that like that and it doesn't it just pops over so then it was hooking on this kind of the secondary latch and that's a little sketchy when we're going to be ripping this thing so we can get rid of this just run the pins we'll still latch it and then that'll be the secondary thing but that'll be done up front and then we don't have to worry about anything up here oh okay well that's easy enough There we go. It's got one of these speed nuts, or not a speed nut, but you know, these clampy doodabbies, which I needed on the hood. But pull those out. Hopefully they'll fit right through there. So here I just shut the hood on the, the rod itself, right there, and then push down. And you can see that little dimple right there. And right there, that's exactly where we need the drill. We'll have perfect pins. Boom, hood pins are done. 24 and a half. On the first bend. Man. So here's the plan. We're gonna take some metal strap we got from True Valley or something, bend a tab down, under the tank, over to here, up to there, and then I'm gonna keep one of these NHRA straps to keep it from doing this way. Mm. And these straps will do this and this way, hopefully. We got a block, 
and the jack so I could puncture the bottom of this and break a couple welds. And um, they're taking my nitrous bottle away. I don't own that with the vice grip. That's approved. So that's where we're going to start. Get this yep. cell in. I think we're going to run it. We might get the trunk in. We'll see before we run it. But because I need the aerodynamics, I think I'm racing power crowd. Tony's working on the door. Yeah, she's done, man. She's <laughs> all day. Was the lock moving when you're hitting the button? Not far enough. I'm, I'm holding the. I got the keys out. I'm getting it up, but it's not. Oh, you got serious. He's got the keys out. Okay, now the fuel cell is professionally installed. We've got these straps bolted in without lock washers because it's light weight stuff. We want to shave some weight. And then this guy here with the medium shirt keeps this from going this way. And I think that's going to work just fine. And then uh, we're going to put the, the deck lid on. It actually latches here. Uh, so we're just going to run some pins up here, race car style. So you actually need a key to get it off still, but it's still faster because of the pins yeah. and then I think we're set uh, we need to check the oil still check um, probably tire pressure pretty good and we're ready am I racing the the power crop if you want <laughs> we can I figure let's see what this thing will do first and then we'll talk about matchups okay that's a good idea all right guys we're gonna cold start this 302 this thing sounds amazing we did the own, our own exhaust on it. It's basically an X pipe. It's a pipes universal system into some, I think they're just summit flow through mufflers and it dumps right around here-ish by the, the ladder bars there. Oh, I do not fit in this very well. Okay, key on, pump's going, ignition on. Oh. Look at that. No choke. still a lot that can happen. Yes, it's running now, but this thing has not been on the road in 40 years. And we're just gonna jump it on the interstate. We got a five speed in it. Let's see if we can make that 900 miles. Gonna try to do it in two days if we can. There's so much that can happen. Not to mention, we're going straight to drag racing. I don't know if we're gonna wring the springs out of this thing or what's gonna happen, but that's what the car was built for. And I think Ted is smiling. He's gonna love it. He had a 427 in here. He had nitrous with the four speed. He ran 1060s with this car back in the day. There was some nitrous solenoids on the fender. He had a wide open switch on the firewall. And uh, man, that guy partied, I'll tell you that much. 7,800 RPM he had that thing sent to. So let's go up here, get up to the line. I think we're racing a Porsche, maybe an S10, I'm not sure. Let's see what we got. Manual steering, brand new clutch, haven't broken it in, and the driver's learning how to drive. We got four tens in this thing, so it should leave pretty good, but we're only going to be able to run 65, 70 on the highway, even with the five speed. We've got about 50 pounds of oil pressure. The motor 
they're supposed to have 70 to 80,000 miles on it, which is really, really good for us, let's be honest. This is the most time I've spent in Pennsylvania. It's a very beautiful state. And the people are awesome. The food is fantastic. The seed is not bolted in all the way. Don't worry about that. We got a nice day here at the track. Big thanks to Maple Grove for letting us come out and play. We had a uh, pop-up meet and greet last night that was just so much fun. I think there's about a thousand people here showed up at the track. And uh, if you made it, thank you. That's awesome. It was so good meeting you. Got to check out some cool cars. And then we're back today to do this. Here we are. Limited prep, I think, was what we're doing. They're spraying a little glue down. They do some serious NHRA stuff here. I think we're gonna run the car first, see what it does, and then we'll figure out how to have a fun matchup. Yeah, it's pretty sticky. They sprayed 100 feet out. 100? Okay. Anything past that, you're on your own. Nice. I didn't think we were getting any glue, so that's just that's a good surprise. Yeah. I don't think I've ever explained this before, and it's really cool. I see a lot of comments, people wanting to get into drag racing and how staging works, or how drivers know what to do on the track. And there's you got these two bulbs here. You got pre-stage and staged, and then you have the tree. And the speed at which the tree moves depends on your class. But you can see Zach's got his foot right there. We got one set of bulbs on, and as he moves forward. Now he's staged. So that ensures that both vehicles are at the exact same spot. Now when you get into the bigger classes and pros, they'll have a little extension sometimes off the front that lets them, you know, stage farther back. It depends if they're going for ET or mile per hour, I guess, right? So, but uh, what do you got in that S10? Sound healthy. That's a 358 small block. Nice. Yep, turbo 350. All right, you give me the hit and 50 feet on that, we might be pretty close. Sounds good. I'll yeah. give you 100. 100? Yep. Holy cow. So this is going to be a ton of fun. Okay. Got to get uh, set up here. We literally thrashed this thing together, rolled it out of the shop, got it here, and that was it. Haven't tried on belts or nothing. So we got to do that. And uh, throw a helmet on. Is this even gonna fit? Oh, it's quiet. Very close. I think that's literally just like a seat belt cut into a strap. Put this one over. Oh, that's severely incorrect, but we're gonna go with it. I can lean the seat back. I could probably get more. Ooh, it's just tight. Okay. Fire extinguisher that's been gone for many years. Oh, it's still got something. Safety check. Throw that back there. Okay. We got a line lock that I might try for the burnout. See if that works. Get this warming up. Get the lid on.
First rip back out, spinning first and second, 1395 at 101, which is exactly what I thought we would run. But we can get this down. We're dropping some tire pressure right now. And uh, I can uh, be a little bit more gentle into two. We can pick up the 330. And I think we might catch, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna wait to shift in second. I didn't quite know where to shift. We found it in third. It's about 64, 162 to 64. Uh, so I can ring it out a little bit. We might catch some more mile per hour and uh, bring that ET down a little bit. But this is incredible. First slip in 40 some years. Awesome. What do you think about that? Awesome. Thanks for the help on this, yeah, man. This is it great. Delicious. Yeah. It's, so good. <laughs> yeah. it's running good. Didn't get hot, nothing. It's perfect. Fan didn't even kick on. What a beast. Round two. this angelo 302 out yeah it does he's gonna give her a shot it's so fun sounds it's, amazing yeah yep. being a manual it feels like you're going faster than you are it's a blast sounds like you're going faster <laughs> yeah it's gonna be cool so we'll uh, get up here let him take this thing for a rip and then we're gonna try to figure out some fun matchups all right tony's driving the car sitting in the car for the first time this poor guy stored this for a year for me and then thrashed on it with me it's only right he gets to rip this thing shake well we found the weak link it is definitely the t5 third gear is absolutely gone he didn't miss it it just went no not today so I've got first second fourth fifth I'm contemplating running again but I think we're gonna try to save it just in case I can't find another t5 I still have 900 miles to get home and I've only got a couple days to do it I got to do something else in Arizona. So right now we're going to get some other rigs up here. We got the Power Kraut, which is Tony's LS swapped Porsche, or is it a Honda Camry? I don't know what that is. It says Camry on the door. And then we've got a small block Chevrolet old Napa parts truck coming down. He's going to get some heat in the motor. I think these two are going to run quick, and then I might take a rip and. Uh, Tony's car, see if I can lose third gear. And then we got to figure out if I'm going to try to limp home with this T5. But you got to remember, there's a lot of metal and parts bouncing around in that case now. And at any time, it could shred that thing into pieces. Um, or if we could find a shop or a piece of grass that's level and another T5, we'll swap that in. And then I've got to hit the road. We, we got to get we got to get some miles down. So this will be fun. We're still going to try to have fun. We're going to figure out what to do with the fair lane in a minute. But we got 5.3 LS versus a 358 and this S10 over here. That's an old parts truck from a local uh, parts store that they converted. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Tony's going to try to leave a little bit easy. It doesn't blow up. There's a lot of magic going on in the back of that thing. This thing, however, is built for this. He's going to give Tony the hit, I believe. 
so we should have a pretty close pretty close <laughs> This is gonna be cool. It's gonna be a little bit of fun that I gotta get wrenching. They're gonna run these like brackets, so they're gonna set left lane at 12:34 and right lane at 11:38, which is what they ran last time. And the trees are gonna run differently in correspondence to their time. So the goal is to get them through the boards. They should be bumper to bumper. Someone's gonna to have to make an improvement to beat the other one. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Now we're out of time at the track. We're already on the face space and. You know, all of the Insta letters and whatever else. I'm trying to find a T5, but it's, you know, Ford, so different input, different output, 74 different seals and shafts and spines. And, you know, so we'll probably end up with a power glide or something. Who knows? But we got to get that figured out. I cannot make another drive shaft, actually, so we'll see what happens. Worse, worse comes to worse. I'm just going to have to drain the oil, try to get as much metal out of it as I can, fill it back with oil and just hit the road. Okay, they got a shop. That's where we started this morning. I'm gonna try to limp this back there and uh, start calling around, try to find trans. And I thought maybe we could just drain and go, but this thing sounds not good. Even in first gear. So here's the plan. I don't have one. But Tony did find a transmission. It's a high ball super slinger. I don't know. It's supposed to be like a T it's a T5, but a different Z, Z T5. I don't know. Words. So then we're gonna go get that and try to drive the fair lane there. It's 50 minutes from here. I don't know how many miles. This old boy lives in a shop and rebuilds them, uh, so you know it's good. And then we're just gonna swap it in the street or something, we'll find some tools. So a couple challenges, one, I need to find enough cash on the way there. And two, we need to get there. Three, swap it, which I don't think that'll be too big of a deal. We find some curb stops and a jack. We probably make her happen. Tony's gonna follow me and uh, we're gonna wrap this thing out, I guess, putting in the transmission for the seventh time. Yeah, bud. That's yes. Right. I forgot how many times you already did one. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be we great. got pretty good on it. Did you take in the Porsche? I'm taking the Porsche. That's all I got. It's nice. me and you out on the road. So we got the Porsche tool truck <laughs> and the one-seater Fairline. This is gonna be gonna be something else. Let's hit the road and see if we make it there.
Might have a change of plans hot on the press here. Yeah, yeah. My name's, my name's Tony Angelo. I'm a, we are a, in Mountain PA, about an hour southwest. I'm trying to find transmissions on Derek's way home so we can just change this thing out and keep rocking. Uh, and I found a guy who's got some T5s. It's all rebuilt, Tramic synchronizers. It's the right spline count we need. And I was like, hey, man, like, we're just, we blew it up at Maple Grove and we'd love to just fix it at your house. And I, you know, I don't, wasn't exactly looking at name drop, but he was, I was like, can I just, is there any chance I can fix your parking lot? And he started telling me some story, but I don't have a parking lot. I kind of do the side of my house. And I was like, all right, well, I'm here with my buddy Derek from Vice Grip Garage. And like, he's really stuck, man. We're trying to get him back to Tennessee. And he goes, well, that does change things quite a, quite a bit. Go ahead a bit. All right, yeah, come on down, fellas. Come on, we'll get you rocking and rolling. Uh, uh, we'll get it going. He's like, I'd love to meet him. I'm like, well, make some space. We'll be there. That's awesome. So we got uh, we got to go to the bank. Yeah. It's like 20 miles, and then we're going to get there. He's going to a fish fry. We're going to meet him at his house. Yeah. Well, I got to get a hamburger at some point. Well, that's true. We got to eat, too. And then, uh, oh, I should tighten the top of the shifters coming off. I'm going to tighten this up really quick, and then we're on the road. made it to, uh, I think this is called Brownstown or something. What a nice drive that was. Really cool. Got to go in here and ask the banker for some money. And then we got another drive to this feller's house. Okay, got it. All right. Car's doing good. I mean, it's staying cool. It's got great oil pressure. It's just, you know, no third gear. <laughs> also, it sounds like there's 14 ball bearings rolling around inside of a coffee can whilst driving. Hopefully we can make it this last leg here. And uh, we made the cross member and everything should come out pretty easy, but I'm also running out of daylight. So I'm gonna have to figure out headlights as well if we're gonna make up some ground tonight. Hey, we made it another, I don't know, 10, 15 miles to a parts store. Fun fact, they don't have an O'Reilly's in the entire state of Pennsylvania for some reason. I got some headlights. We gotta wire them up. Some switches, or not switches. Rags, just dropped them, somebody's got them and a uh, cigarette lighter so I can charge the digital computer pocket device. Some ATF for the trans we're buying. Super long extension, just in case that fella ain't got one. And uh, we're gonna wire up some lights right now because it's getting dusk and then we got about an hour drive to this dude's house. He should be back from the fish fry. By the way, this is not the first dude that builds them in his garage that he lives in. This is another guy. <laughs> That's just a Mustang dude, and it's cheaper. So that's the one we're going for. So we got these connectors here. Going to jump power. I can't remember. I think uh, red is high, green is low, potentially. Try to swing it over to this connector. If not, just run a wire. But all four of these headlights are smoked. I checked them at the track before I left. Uh, so we're just gonna put, I think, the top ones in just so I can see farther, because I'm blind at night anyway. And then uh, see if we can hot wire these with a gator clip on the battery. Okay, so Tony threw on a headlight switch, yep. which I broke. But we got running lights, brake lights, hit it. And the headlights, all right? Boom. Both headlights. Uh, I did somehow manage to jam low beams into the high beam buckets. They may be a little mangled, but listen, they're rusty anyway. And then this is our on-off switch right here which I just jammed between the two connections, which backs feeds to that side, and we are ready to rock. So all I gotta do is come out, plug that in, pull the switch out for running, oh, we're golden. Now we can get on the interstate and just rock. Okay, let's get to this guy's house. We got a transmission to yank. Yeah, I got three. So we made cool. it to Jason's house. Uh, I believe we're west of York, let's call it. Yep. So it's somewhere. Yep, yep. And uh, this is Jason back here. And he's an engineer by trade, but he does this stuff as a hobby to fund his race car stuff. And there is parts and gears 
and shafts. It's like just about everything is T5, huh? And whatnot. Yeah, just about. There's, uh, there's some We're on the right place. Show you ours. There. So this is our unit right here. Yeah. Uh, a lot cleaner than the other one, Tony. <laughs> yeah, a little better. It looks a little better. <laughs> I, I often like to tell the story about I, I sold a I sold a trans to a kid. He came in here, and he was grinning from ear to ear. He was looking at the trans, and he was saying, you know, oh, yeah, no problem. I have my core in the, in the, in the truck. And he, he runs out, grabs it, brings it in, throws it on the floor. It's in a black plastic bag. Quickly moves out of the garage, gets back, and boom, he's out the drive. Well, I, I pulled out of the bag, and it's got like that much grease on my oh. Well, you're hey, you go. Good luck. You're going to get about the same core out of this okay. one, if that's okay. Very good. All right. Very good. Well, we're going to jack this thing up, block it, get the drive shaft out, cross member, and uh, we're going to leave the bell housing and just yank it like this and stab it in just like that. And all we have to do is uh, pinch Tony's hand in there with the throw bearing, and um, we should be able to rock and roll. Hopefully it has the same. What's the deal with the seals on these? There's like nine different seals or something? Yeah, so I like to run that little small boot. They have a bigger, some of them have a bigger boot. See, yeah, that's the same ID. Exactly. Oh, it's, okay. That's well, not a big deal, though. It, Another issue we developed on the way here is after we jumped the headlights and the taillights, yeah. all the dash lights started blinking and alt light, oil light, the red. I thought it was nitrous, which might be a warning light. I'm not sure. It was like a UFO in there. Beep, boop, 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 all over the place. And we lost the taillights and it started quitting intermittently. I think I figured out the quitting issue. I got to fix that before we leave. Have a gasoline leak. We could maybe fix that. Um, and then we got to figure out what's going on with the, the running lights. I'd like to have those because the plan is once this is swapped, I want to keep driving, I don't know, two, three, four in the morning uh, because I ha I need to be home tomorrow night. I have to. So, and big, huge thanks to Jason in advance for letting us wrench in his garage here. And he threw one together for us. And I've said this a million times, but the car community is unlike any other. All you guys are just awesome, and thank you, all of you, uh, for helping others out in need. And, and this is what it's about, hot rodding. Break it, build it, break it again. We're on the rebuild, rebuild the broken build stage, but anyway, let's get after it. Okay, so we're under the rig here, obviously. We got the cross member out, um, drive shaft out. I dumped three gallons of juice on Jason's floor. Sorry, Jason. It's all right. And he promptly handed me his uh, uh, socks over See? there, and we cleaned it up. And we got it tilted down. We got, uh, whoa, it's, yep. we're ready to rock, <laughs> obviously. So do you want to meet, keep pulling it and slide it? Yeah, well, not? yeah, we go back with the jack. Okay. And, and then we come down. Okay, okay. downage. Can you work it down? Yeah, get us a little down. Okay, I'm coming down. Somebody got a... I got my hand on the front. He's got his hand on the back. Okay. There we go. Want me to come back? Yeah. Well, oh. hold on a sec. Okay. We got to come back oh, here. And that collar is being problematic. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> That's fine. Is that all right? Oh, yeah. <sighs> We're good now. So the uh, throw out bearing had a little bit of pressure on it, huh? It Your just... hand is in a major pinch point there, Marty. Okay. Wait, am I Marty? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, send that thing. We'll come. Yep. We'll we'll try to first the Go a little to the drinker <laughs> side. <laughs> That's way too much. <laughs> we'll drag out. Go ahead. It's uh, leaking more juice. Oh boy. Well, anyway, as neat and precise as you can be, we have the transmission out. Like watching robots work. And uh, <laughs> watching robots work, Tony said. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh I think Jason might pop the cover off of that so he could show us how bad we deleted third gear and then we're gonna quickly stab the new one in here just as precise and quickly as this out process. Okay, so here's the comparison of the two units. We don't need this thing. That's plugged yes, off. Right. Go in and go we got a speedo delete, the... so we're going to delete this one as well. Okay. And then yeah. this is the collar for the throwout bearing. So this rides like this, and then the hydraulic throwout bearing slides into this pin and rides back and forth on this pin. So we've got to get this over here, and then I need to make sure to clock it precisely within 359 degrees where that was because the lines for the throwout bearing come out where the clutch fork used to go or pivot fork and ball assembly and all that stuff 
And then the trick we're gonna have is somehow lining all of that garbly gook up before we get this into our clutch and all that stuff. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a good time. So this time we're putting some never come off juice on it because I went to loosen this one and it just fell right off. So that's obviously not what we want. You can see it was very tight at one point. Here's a new one coming in. Jason actually put this in his Fox body, tested it, took it back out. Pretty awesome. Okay, now the big challenge is, see that throw out bearing, that blue bearing in there? We gotta line the shaft up with that and that pin. I've gotta simultaneously lift and press this in, rotate it, match the splines, and stab it. And we gotta be fairly gentle here because we don't want to misalign the clutch and all of that stuff as well. And we got to hit, well, this is at least ginormous, so that's, that's better. And we've pulled the whole shifter assembly out, so this is flatter. Tony's going to try to guide me. Jason's jacking. We'll see what happens. Okay, it's light red, and there we go. You ready to go up? Yep. I'm gonna start. All right, in. Ow! Oh, up, up a little bit. My angle looked like it was good. Up, up the front, up. Okay, slower. That's good. A little more. All right, hold up. Thank you guys for the help. No problem. <laughs> Come on, Yo, board. grease. You all right? It looks like it needs yeah, to go up. You want grease? Stop. Don't no. Let me just. It's, no, it's in far enough. I don't want to come in anymore until I get this thing on there. Okay. On the bell. On the the bearing it? retainer is a tight fit with a seal. Do you mean turn trans? No, you're gonna do it. Uh, it's not getting on flat. We should put some grease on this bearing retainer, maybe. You want some? Just hand me a little bit. Yep. Thank you. Tony's gonna put a little bit of little, grease on the bearing so it'll slide onto that input shaft a little easier, so we can line that pin up. And he's limited by the travel of the hydraulic lines. Do we want to bring the back up a little bit? That's what it looks like to me. It okay, means the back needs to go Jason, up. Jason, could you give it a pop? I mean, we're not going sure. in yet until this up. is on. Yeah, it's just the angle. Okay, another the angle. one? Another one? There we go. That should be better. better. We, can, we can move back away, Tony, if it needs more. No, you're good right there. I just can't get it on. Okay. There she goes. All right, we All did right, it. Nice, I heard it. I just got to line it up on the pin, right? I am almost there. Come in a little bit. There. I'm on that pin. All right, go ahead and send that thing in. Nice. Pull it back okay. Up, about an inch. Up, 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 up. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Bolts. Bolt. Get that jack out of here. Okay. Is that it on this side? There, it gets there should be no, two there's... bolts on each oh, side. There's one. No, that can, there's two on this side. Right. There's one under Jason's right ear. Okay. There it is. Yep. Yeah. Good? Snug. Oh, that's a bug in a rug. Nice. Ready? Hercules it. All right, ready. That's perfect. Oh. Put it on super Did you hard tighten again. this one? <laughs> you want a torque wrench? No. <laughs> I, got, I have one of those over actually. Over there. My tennis elbow was pretty good for that. <laughs> yeah, that's 90 foot pounds. And the other ones are. Go ahead. It's kind of on there. Oh, okay. that was a good pop. That was yeah. medical, though. So, okay, now. Jack under the Snoots and Fritzel. Let's get that cross member back. There it is. And you want. Hold on. Okay. All right. Hold on. All right. So the trans mount needs to come. Put this cross member in that right there. Okay, now can you push up on the trans too? Oh, jeez. There we go. I was in a weird position. Okay, then let's line this up. Come down. Perfect. There we go. How do you like that fit? Oh. I like that glove. Let it go, bud. Tony made this cross member and it is legit. We made one the night before we made <laughs> this one, but once the beer goggles were gone, she was a little, little rough. We forgot about things like the exhaust. It's in. Old lock washers. Looking good. And those two nuts there, bud. Mm -hmm. there okay, they got this thing apart. Okay, I'm not a transmission expert, but I'm gonna say there's some wear here. Wow. And you can see it down on the, the counter shaft too. The, mate, the mating gear down in there. And you were saying that regular oil changes would have fixed that? 
They're just, they're no, just, I'm, they're, just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> they're just weak. Oh, there's that noise I was hearing. Right. So you can see some uh, uh, initial starting, like I'm looking in the, in the root of that tooth. You can see oh, yeah. some chipping and stuff like that. So that's, that could have been from some metal flying all over the place. I can see all the bits and pieces down in there. So we want to look, and I don't see it. Sometimes there's a stamping on that counter shaft there to tell you what gear set it is. But I've seen that counter shaft before, and this is a very early um, V8 box. So that, that means it's 260 foot pound of torque is there on rating, paper. Rating. Oh, we rating. found it then. We got yeah. it. Yeah. We're well. making more than 260. <laughs> That's <making> good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> 260 Dino test it. <laughs> <laughs> So we're talking about some differences here in the one he builds versus this thing. Yep. This is stock. Yep. Look at this piece he puts in. Yep. Obvious difference. And he said there's shimming procedures and other things that they do to beefing these up too to help with that third gear because that's common, I guess, right? Yep. Exactly. Yeah, 261 foot pounds. Bam. Yep. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Well, the yep. trans is in, cross members in, drive shafts in. Got to get exhaust on this thing and fix a fuel leak in the back and a fuel leak in the front. Add a turbo and then we're out of here. Perfect. <laughs> Little update. Car is back on the ground. The clutch is bled again. Uh, Jason just adjusted the shift here. Apparently there's, what do they call them? Shift limiters? Shift stops. Shift stops. Yeah, so. That's cool. Um, I'm sure it prevents damage of some kind. I am now digging back into digicals because it's my favorite thing. Uh, I'll show you what was going on with the ignition. Super easy fix. Tony and Marty are working on the taillights. I uh, traded him some chicken fingers and ranch for some labor, so he's, <laughs> he's helping. And over here I had a wire coming off of the relay that we traced into this that comes all the way back around that I spliced in for the main power for this. But it was an old fused link that was just shoddy. So, I asked Jason if he had any wire. Look at this. This guy knows what's going on. He said fair game. Got some. So now we're going to run this hot. Uh, from here, we'll have just one barrel connector, and that should fix that. Got to fix a fuel leak here. That's also leaking gas. And I really want to get this replaced, but maybe not tonight. It's getting really, really late. And uh, got to keep an eye on this belt. This is a cool bracket, but it's starting to to bend. And this, you can see the angle isn't quite right, and it's starting to fray the belt. So we got to keep an eye on that. If we have time, may even try to fix that tonight. Because we lose this, we lose everything. So we got to keep that in mind. But anyway, I'm gonna get this done quick. We've narrowed it down to the harness from. This side to that side. This is open. Yep. This is fine. So Which that is socket's good. Yeah, together. this guy's power and ground. Yeah, separated. <laughs> For sure. And, and then you think it's in one, here? One, yeah. One that one? Yeah. We ran a power wire just from the battery, and then we used that as 12 volts to determine we were grounding out in this guy. So now we're just trying to figure out why. Okay, we got her pushed out. We've got... Uh, we even added a Bluetooth charger in here for my TomTom, -tom, so that's pretty good. Jason, thank you so much. Yeah, Appreciate thank you it. Very much. Awesome. Appreciate it. Big thanks to Tony. He drove way out of his way to help. Yeah. And uh, Charlie, also known as Marty. Uh, thanks for your help, man. Let's hit the road again.
Well, a guy swung into a Motel 5, five and a quarter maybe. I think I'm gonna shut her down for tonight. Well, actually it's technically early in the morning the next day. Uh, it's raining, drizzling enough and uh, fogging up on the inside. I can't see nothing. My eyes are bad enough as it is. Drove through Maryland, which is pretty cool. I don't think I've ever been there before and uh, made it into West Virginia. What an awesome day this was. The driving was great. Uh, running this car at Maple Grove again after 40 years, putting it on the road again after 40 years. You know, a little setback with the transmission, but no big deal. And uh, it's just been a really good day. I'm gonna run in here, grab a hot shower, four, maybe five hours of sleep, you know what I mean? And then tomorrow we are gonna have to absolutely cannonball this thing hopefully we don't have any more issues and uh, see if we can get back a time for my flight to uh, where am I going next Arizona I think is the plan okay see you in the morning captain's log day two seven nine million early sixteen twelve rain the clock well here we are car did not get stolen last night well, I guess we're still driving that today. Uh, check the weather radar system. I'm watching the news this morning, drinking a cup of joe. Kind of interesting. The storm cell came over top. Must have looked down and said, oh, there's Derek. You know, with another death trap. Let's circle back around. And then redeveloped to the west of me and came back. And if you fast forward on the radar, it just keeps doing that all day long, precisely down the road I wanna go. We might get a break late, late, late tonight, which is great because I can't see at night. After eye surgery, my eyesight is worse. Yeah, figure that one out. So, we're gonna go to the parts store and get uh, probably some rain x and some rags. I'm gonna need a bunch of towels wipe the inside it's low 40s and with the holes in the firewall and the floor and everything else with wind chill it's probably low 30s in the car so when I breathe it gets foggy so try to find some anti-fog or I can save money and just only breathe twice per minute you know hold my breath a little bit which is probably what I'll do you know and then there's a sweet gas station down there with a bunch of flags and stuff all the way around it. I'll meet you guys there. We'll fill this thing all the way up, see how much we used last night. I got a lot farther than I thought I did. I must have dozed off a couple 12 times. We have 677 miles to go, and I would like to try to do that today. Barring we have absolutely zero issues other than fuel and tacos. You know, so anyway, let's do a cold start on this thing, see if it fires up. No choke on this bad boy, but it usually fires pretty good. Build some fuel pressure, you can hear it. There we go. Give her a couple shots of gas. Now that a guy's under a little cover here, we can get to work on our glass situation. It's a 37 step process. Do the outside, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Let it dry, do it again. Do the inside, do the outside, do the inside, do the inside. I did find anti-fog. So our plan of not breathing plus the anti-fog might do us okay. 
Have you seen how much these microfiber towels have gone up in cost? They wanted like $29 for the bundle. Nope, I'll just sit on them, dry them, you know what I mean? Okay, we're gonna throw some 93 octane in this, believe it or not, because I didn't check the oil this morning. Because I can't. There's just a bolt RTV'd into the provision. So to make up for that, I'm gonna at least run one tank of semi-decent fuel through it. And uh, I think that's it. We're just gonna jump on the road and wait for the next thing to, you know, come apart in an unscheduled fashion. And I'm looking forward to trying to find some drier weather if we can, but I don't think it's gonna happen. It's just swirling over my head. Let's see if the fuel cell stayed in. Hey, look at that. Kind of solid. Ooh. Scotch lock. That's a top fucking find. Okay, so how do we do on fuel? <clears throat> oh, empty. Okay, well, it's a good thing we're here, you know. Yep, mm hmm sure, okay. I guess we could have cleaned the glass, you know, before we left, but that's okay. We're getting there all in one step. This stuff here is going to be the secret, I think, to this operation today. Get this sprayed on here, you know. And I also do my side windows so a guy can look at old cars that pass you, you know. Boy, this seat could not get any closer. I am just jammed in here. Well, I think we're ready to attempt our first big leg of our trip, day two here. Let's hit the road and see how far we can get. I'm going to try to push it. 140 miles and then we'll check out fuel we still got to figure out miles per gallon things like that we got to check our hubs make sure our axle bearings are doing okay i just kind of looked at them and repacked them i should have replaced them but we were in such a thrash to get this thing together we're already fogging up but the headlights work has made it 108 miles and I think we'll check the fuel situation and then I got to redo my uh, rain -X. I well I'll just show you what I'm looking at here this is basically my view and uh, it gets a little dicey out there with the big trucks and everything like that these drops will not move I try to get into fresh wind stuff like that it ain't happening so I'm going to try to dry this with the chamois again, reapply, we'll fill, look at the fuel situation, see what happens in 100 miles, and maybe they've got a really burnt, shriveled hot dog in here and a bag of salt and vinegar chips, and then we're just going to keep going. The car's doing good, oil pressure's coming down a little bit, but oil's getting thinned out from being hot. This thing, look how cool it's staying. The fan hasn't even turned on, so that is really fantastic. And uh, well, that's really the extent of my gauges, so <laughs> sweet. The floor has a slight leak in it. Look at the water. That's the entire vehicle, just soaked. Well, just ran the math. Uh, 6.84192137888 repeating gallons. 15.88 uh, miles to the gallon. That ain't bad at all. We got a gas sipper. Hot rod drag race car. So that's good to know. Now we can do the math on the 20. We're running foam though, so let's say 17 numbers. We can go farther, is what I'm saying. As long as the glass can stick around, unfortunately, we're gonna be driving through this stuff, I think, all day until late, late tonight. So it might be every 100, 150 miles, I gotta stop cleaning the glass up. I'm also gonna do the back glass because when I turn, I just do this. Turning! And then hope. Eventually, I think I'm going to run out of turn juice and hit something. So I don't got side mirrors, and my rear view is pointless at this juncture. I'm 
we'll throw the deck lid back on, try to clean this glass up. Okay, a guy did manage to get some hot dogs and some boom bang sauce or something like that, and a bag of gushers, you know, because vitamins, you gotta get vitamin juice and stuff. I'm uh, gonna be driving through the rest of the way of Virginia, through the, through the Virginias, uh, and going by Roanoke, Ro Rowan Pine, Rowan Spruce. So anyway, I've always wanted to go through that area of the state. I wish it was clear. Maybe it'll clear up a little bit, but uh, this has just been a wonderful, beautiful drive so far. And next fuel stop, we're going to do, i got another one picked in 105 miles, I think, because the gas stations get a little sparse in that area. So let's blast out another 100. Hopefully the car hangs in there. It's going to be kind of dry, but it's drizzly, which is almost worse if you've ever run the rain -X because it's not big enough drops to move. It just sits there. Boy, it was getting really bouncy there a little for a little while, and I realized never changed the setup after the track because we were so fixated on getting a transmission for this. The air shocks are maxed out, and the tires are aired down, so the back end's just doing that. This time when I fill, I'm going to let the air out of the shocks and let the springs actually do spring things. And uh, I might find air, but I don't mind a little bit lower PS on the eyes in this rain because the roads up here seem to, uh, they have dips or grooves in them, and water sits in them. So. But the car's doing great. The valve train's getting a little clanky. And it's a roller setup, so that's hydraulic roller, so that's not normal, I would say. But guy's just gonna keep his ear meter fully wide open on that. We might have to stop and just run through the valves quick, valve set the lash, do the do the valve train. But I would like to do that somewhere dry if possible. So I'm gonna fill up, grab a coffee. I don't think there's anything else to report. All four tires. Yep. Okay, well, let's just keep going. Yep, the shocks are up here. Oh, this one's empty. Must be the other shock that's wide out. That would explain why it's bouncing all weird. Well, ain't this thing fancy? Is anything happening? Oh, there we go. Breakfast plan. I got updates. I got uh, women's small knit gloves, so I should be able to cover both thumbs. And I got a fleece blanket that's going to do nothing warmth-wise, but at least we'll have something to lay on when we break down. Let me get this out and ready. My legs are just, they're starting to shake, and I think that means I'm cold. I'm not quite sure. But it makes shifting really inconvenient when you're, you know, doing that. <laughs> then, to top it off, 
Is this really only two feet wide? This better not be a Snuggie. Snuggie for sale. Two bucks. I also got a Reese's peanut butter to drop into my coffee. Yeah, I said it. But listen, you need to try it before you buy it. Well, obviously, but you need to try it before you knock it. Straight hot black coffee. What is this? Is this a potato sack? And then just drop a Reese's in it. The day has come where I can't operate a blanket. I can't believe it. There we go. Oh, I forgot to take... I can't sit on my wallet or my back gets bad. There we go. Okay, I got a gas station planned. It is 189 miles. Let's stretch her out a little bit. I want to try to stay ahead of this rain that seems to be redeveloping over our head continually. Okay, yep, 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 Boy, we're cruising right along. Had a spurt of uh, dryness there, so allegedly wicked it up on the tachometer and really got some miles down, but I'm back in it again. I was trying to shoot the gap, but kind of get it done. There are some really nice back roads from here to cut like Northeast Tennessee down to Southwest Tennessee, which is where I'm at, but I'm so far behind on schedule. I think we're going to use this overdrive at five speed and just keep on cruising. This is pretty wild. I got in such a hurry last time and excited about my terrible hot dogs. I forgot to put the uh, cap on the fuel cell and it actually rode the entire way. However many miles that was, 74 kajillion, let's call it. So anyway, just going to wet the back neck. Might grab something to chew on. You know, some beef jerky and nacho cheese dip. Yeah! <clears throat> By the way, the lifter noise is not getting any worse. I think it just needs a skosh more preload, maybe. Uh, it's a very high lift cam, though, so it could just, could, that could just be the way it is. Oil pressure is holding steady. It's running so cool with this cold case in it. I really like that. I just glance at the gauges every couple hours, every day or whatever. Going pretty sweet. Headlights are hanging in there. Tail lights are hanging in there. I just gotta remember that these are hot wired to the battery in the rear. I gotta pull the new headlight switch, but only to park. I can't go the full headlight because then we're feeding power both directions and things get all sorts of fritzy. It looks like a UFO in there blinking and all that sorts of stuff. So let's fill up again. I think we got two more fuel stops and I might be able to make it all the way back. Supper time. Let me show you how this is done. Okay, here we go. It's so good. Then, when you run out of beef jerky, you can finish it up with Fritos. Easy snack to eat while driving. And uh, if it's not jalapeno, or my, then you get the mild cheddar. This goes good. I get the jalapeno and then the chili flavored. Well, that's really good. Okay, we got another 150 miles or something, 160 miles, and that'll put us at a Love's Travel Center uh, just west of Cookville, Tennessee. And if you make it there, just a couple few hours, two to three hours from home at that point. 
also just realized that I gave Tony his toolbox back yesterday and I have nothing but a Leatherman. That's fine. Let's keep going. Yep. Well, good morning. Clink. A guy did make it back late, late last night. What a drive that was. Basically rain, 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 and more rain. But overall, what a fantastic trip and what a killer car. You know, this reminds me a couple years back. Remember that Chevelle we did? I believe it was a four-door. Built a ratty little small block, took the engine to North Dakota because it didn't have one, put it in the Chevelle, and then drove the Chevelle all the way back to Minnesota. This kind of reminds me of that. We bought this thing as a roller. No engine, no transmission, no rear end, no electrical, no fuel system, nothing. Thrashed it together and then took this to the same drag strip that it raced at 40 years previously and then put it on the road after 40 years and then traveled 900 miles in this thing. It was just so much fun. I wish the weather would have been a little bit better, especially going through Virginia and things like that, but that's okay. Beggars can't be losers. Sorry about that one. Anyway, if you guys want to see the actual engine build and getting that stabbed into this thing, you can go check out Stay Tuned. Those guys are awesome folks. Huge thank you to them for helping out with this thing. And uh, now the now the other part, I got to inventory everything, pull all the junk out of this, put the good stuff on the shelf, throw the trash away, start making lists. There's a lot of improvements we can make on this car. You can bet it's going to stick around. There's too much history in this thing just to let it sit. And I got a lot of ideas for it, but if you've got some, please bleep bloop them. I really do take them into consideration and seriously, but I think we still need to be making improvements on this. Keep it on a Keep it on the strip, keep it on the street, and keep having fun. And, and Ted, I know you're out there smiling down. You made a heck of a car. Good job. Now you guys, be sure to stick around. Next week's gonna be another amazing road trip. 900 miles, pff, easy. We're going for, I don't even know, way over a thousand miles in another awesome classic car. Thanks guys for watching. Appreciate all of you so very much. Could not do this without you. And we'll see you next time.